You have made a point of publicly honoring heroes from the LGBTQ plus community, mm. like Edie Windsor. Mm. For those of you who might not remember her name, she was the lead plaintiff in the Supreme Court case, United States versus Windsor, which was considered a landmark legal victory for the same-sex marriage movement in the United States. The case was won in 2013, only a few years before Edie's death. How important are heroes for young people, and who were yours when you were growing up? Mm, that's such a good question. I think heroes are hugely important, and I think that they they sort of tell a story in a human way. Like I, I you know, I just think about Edie's story, and you know, she was what, like 83 when the Supreme Court decision happened, and I don't think she, you know, and her wife had already died. Yeah, didn't get to see that. Yeah. So. And, you know, I think that one of the <coughs> things is that she had been fighting for gay rights her whole life. It's mm -hmm. just that that was the fight that became the most public. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, she's certainly been a huge hero for me and uh, inspiration for me, even though she's passed away. She continues to inspire me. And, you know, um, I, and I also think that young people are more interested today in in their history than mm. they've ever been and I think part of it has to do with the internet and they just like they're curious you know they're, they're, they want to know who who came before them mm -hmm. which is really unusual and they're interested in who comes after them like a lot of these kids that um, like you can hear it again with the kids from Parkland Florida that they're not just doing it for themselves they're doing it for the kids who are going to come into that school after them and yeah. that's very moving to me that yes. they have this consciousness of a timeline um, which most teenagers that I've experienced yeah. in the past don't really hold yes right so that's kind of a new thing it's a maturity that's impressive yes. and I don't think I had that when I was their age I certainly didn't <laughs> and I I have to say that when I looked out into the world I think there were people that were heroes to me in the sense that they were being themselves mm -hmm. right they were out there being themselves, but I just didn't have the consciousness to, to see any, well, I didn't see any gay people out there who were, I just didn't see them. I don't, they, they were obviously out there, but I didn't have access to that um, information. So for me, um, I think there were people in the entertainment field, believe it or not, like Ruth Gordon, the actress Ruth Gordon, it's so crazy to even think of myself as a, you know, 17 year old, 18 year old, and I was like, <laughs> I was completely Are you in love with her. I was in love with her, and <laughs> in love with her, in the sense that like, she was so original. She yes. was so herself, yeah. right? And it's such an odd and crazy and really queer um, hero to have as a as a you know as a young. Man. <laughs> but there you have it. Like that was well. There was that movie where she had that. Love affair with oh yeah, Harry Harold Hunter. and Maude. That's, and so. I think that that's that and Rosemary's Baby. And then I read her autobiography and realized she had been with the whole Algonquin Round Table. And you know she had and she wrote Adam's Rib and uh, oh. you know uh, that other uh, Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy movie um, called like Mike and Pete or something like that. Um, she'd written like you know with Garson Kane and she had yeah. written like for movies so I became really fascinated with her um, you know message I suppose which was her sort of like you know just go out there and be yourself and um, so I think she was an early you know an early hero and there are probably other ones but she's, but that she's the yours, one that, that's great but she's the one that comes to mind yeah. at the moment